In this video, we're going to talk about the flight of a projectile. So this means we're going to talk about where the equation comes from, what the equation means, how we could use the equation to find characteristics of the curve, like the height, or when an object falls. All right, let's get started. This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. All right, so our first step here is to talk about what the equation is and uh, how it works. Well, first of all, let's see. What does this equation look like? Well, there you have it on the, on the screen. You can see that that is uh, a height function, and the height function is dependent upon time, which is t. So this is not um, a function h of x. It's h of t. So h stands, for, of course, for the vertical distance, which we call height. So we can figure out what the height is of a projectile over time. We don't care about what the horizontal distance is of this projectile. No, nope, don't care. This equation is only going to tell us what is the height of a projectile as it courses through time. All right, so t is time, h is height. Well, what's d? d is the initial distance. So if you're at ground level, your distance is going to be your initial vertical distance is going to be zero. If you're in a hole, maybe you're in a 10 foot hole, then it, your distance would be negative 10. Maybe you're standing on a 100 foot cliff, so you would have a initial vertical distance of 100, that would be D. So it depends on how high you are when you're starting this problem or starting this issue with a uh, projectile. V is the initial vertical velocity. So the vertical velocity is what we care about. Again, don't care about the horizontal uh, velocity. We're only looking at the height of this projectile over time. All right, now what's g? g is gravity. And you can see that the coefficient in front of the g is, is negative, and that makes sense because gravity is pulling down. It's a negative force. So a positive would mean you're moving up in a negative the force is moving down, okay? So uh, it's going to be a negative there in front. That's our initial coefficient. And if you're on Earth, uh, the initial gravity is 32 feet per second squared. So if you substitute in 32, half of 32 is 16, and we get this equation. Okay, so anytime you're dealing with a problem on Earth, you'll usually see this 16. Um, now, again, these units, when we work with this equation, will be, um, this is feet in seconds, okay? So this is what the gravity would look like in feet per second, okay? And of course, if you're dealing with uh, meters, it's a slightly different equation, okay? And uh, you would use that one. All right, well, let's actually use this for a problem, and I'll show you how it works. So this is a typical question that you get with a flight of a projectile type of problem. So here it is, right? So here's the beginning. Here's like the initial um, given information. An archer stands at the top of a 200 foot cliff and fires an arrow. Uh, okay, the, if the arrow has an initial upward velocity of 150 feet per second, what are the things that we can determine from this given information? Well, there's three things. Uh, we could figure out what the maximum height of the arrow is. We could figure out uh, when it reaches that maximum height, and of course, when it eventually hits the ground. Okay, so there's three things that we can find. Uh, first thing you gotta do when you're solving these problems is of course build an equation. So we automatically know what the general form of the equation looks like. Uh, of course, we are assuming that this problem is on Earth and uh, we have our units here, so we've got this. So this is what we start with, right? So every time we start the problem, we've got these uh, different values to plug in. So if you want to figure out your height function, we build it. Well, I already threw in the 32 feet per second, took half, and I got that negative 16. All right, now we're standing on the top of a 200 foot cliff. That's the D value, okay? So I know it's gonna go right in here for the D. Uh, let's see, the initial, uh, or sorry, the arrow has an initial upward velocity of 150 feet per second. That's our V. So 
it's fairly easy to set up the equation. Uh, and of course, the uh, it's an upward velocity. So in other words, uh, trying to be neat about this. So I know that it's it's going upward. So it's a positive velocity. I, I guess you could fire the arrow downward, and it would be a negative 150. All right. So um, we're up. 200 feet, so we're going to put a 200 right here. Sometimes these problems can get pretty nasty if the units don't match. Here we can see that the units are all nice, so I'm not worried about the units. All right, so our first step was to understand what's happening. We got ourselves an equation. Um, what some people do when they do these problems is they model it. Um, so they'll actually draw, like for instance, I'm going to erase this in a second, but um, they'll draw a picture like here's a cliff bad looking cliff I know looks like a building so this guy or woman someone an archer fires the arrow the arrow boom, go, does something like this where of course this is your ground level right so what we want to do uh, is kind of imagine now this is really what's happening here you have a uh, x sorry y axis and then here's your x-axis, which is the uh, ground. Okay, so we've got this. Maybe I could draw this in here real quick. Okay, so now technically it's not the x-axis, right? This is time. Uh, and of course this is height. Uh, and I'm going to put height. Uh, maybe I just put h. Okay, so the function is defined using our h of t. Now what what we were given was some critical information, right? We were given this initial height. So this initial height was the 200, right? So that was 200 feet. All right, well, what do we want to find? We want to figure out, uh, hmm, how high is that point, right? What is the maximum height of that point? So we want to figure out the Y value, which is really the H value. Right, the second of our uh, ordered pair. We also want to figure out what time it gets there. That would be our horizontal axis. That's our x, our, our first value. So we basically want to know what the x and y, or the t and h is of this point. We also want to know when does it hit the deck, right? When does it actually come back down to earth and hit the ground? That's ground level. Now, ground level means, of course, that it's zero height. I put a comma here because I don't know what time it reaches that point, right? Okay, so I, I basically have a couple things that I want to find. I basically want to find three pieces of information, okay? I don't want to put the point here because I know I'm going to need a little bit of room, but it, it's, it's that information that we can find. Now, there's a lot of ways to find this information. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a TI Inspire calculator. You could use whatever type of graphing calculator you want. I just happen to have one of those to work with. There's a lot of different types of calculators uh, that you could use. Just try to use a graphing calculator. If you can't use a graphing calculator, then you're going to have to use algebraic methods. Um, and I'm not going to show those in this video. That's for a different video. All right, so let's get to the calculator. All right, so I've got myself a TI Inspire. I'm going to get a new document. Uh, and of course, I'm going to go to a graphing application. So now I'm going to throw this in here. This is a minus 16. I'm tempted to put a T in here, but nope, the calculator will not uh, understand T. You have to put an X value. All right, so we're just doing a little substitution, right? Instead of being H of T, I have to enter this in as f of x into the calculator. All right, so my variable has to be x's. All right, so you plug this in. Now, when you plug this into the calculator, it's going to give you what looks like an error or a mistake of some sort. Uh, the window isn't set up correctly for this problem. I'm only going from, uh, here's my uh, x axis, which is technically my time axis, right? So I'm going from negative 10, what? negative time to 10 seconds. All right. Well, first of all, I don't care about negative time. I want to go um, only forward in time and 10 seconds isn't enough because I'm not seeing the whole arc 
which is a parabola. I'm not able to see it. I'm only able to see one side of the parabola. That's because it's taking longer than 10 seconds to, to uh, fly its whole path. All right, so what do you do? All right, well, you go to Menu. You go to Windows. And I don't like to use all this built-in stuff. I like to dig into the settings myself, so I'm going to go to Windows Settings. Now, I am going to leave um, my horizontal axis to go a little bit into the negatives. Um, and then how far does it go to the right? I have no idea. I'm going to put 30 seconds. Okay. Um, I'm also going to scale this. Oops. I'm going to scale this to go instead of automatically. I'm going to go by fives. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. What's the X minimum? I don't care about it dropping below, but I will put a little bit of negatives, right? My my uh, height, I'm going to do a little bit of negatives so I can see the entire um, horizontal and vertical axis. So let's talk about the maximum. What's the maximum height? I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to put uh, 5,000. I don't know. I have no idea. I have not graphed this earlier. Yep. Okay, 5,000 was a little too high because my parabola now looks like a little bump, right? No problem. You can go back to Menu, Windows, Windows Settings, and you can change these values at any time. So I'm going to put uh, 1,500. Maybe I'll see a better arc. Yeah, it's even better. So it's even getting uh, lower than that. So I'm going to try 900. Okay. I'd say that's good enough. Now you could play around with these things uh, and get an idea of what they look like. Now I thought I went below. Um, I thought my Y minimum, all right, so maybe I'm not seeing, I wanna be able to see the Y axis, or I'm sorry, the X axis. So I gotta dip down a little bit further. All right, so now I'm starting to see that axis down there. So you basically adjust the window size um, so that we could see the entire arc Okay, now the first thing I want to know is, I want to know what's the height of the projectile, right? I want to figure out where's the top of that thing. So let me get that out of the way. So to find the top, I go to Menu, Analyze Graph, and I want to find the maximum, right? So this curve has a maximum height. Now the way this, of course, works is to find this maximum height, you go somewhere to the left of the maximum, and uh, you, you click the center keypad, I'm using the mouse here, but anyway, I'm, you click on the center keypad, the center keypad right here, but then, and then what you do is you scroll to the right of that maximum. So you basically are showing the calculator, hey, the maximum is somewhere in this region. Now you click the center keypad. Now the calculator gives you this. Now you'd think that this would be good enough. You say, okay, there's my answer. No, the uh, questions that come up on standardized tests are going to be very specific. It's going to say, what is the maximum height? Well, which is it? You can't just put down a, this ordered pair on a standardized test. It's not good enough, right? Um, as a matter of fact, I am not even seeing enough values there. So if I go into settings, I could even get a larger float value. And now I could see a little bit more. I have, I have a little bit more accuracy in my answer. Okay, so now the question is, which one of these represents the height? Uh, again, uh, the height is the Y value, right? Our height is the vertical. And there you go, there's our Y or our vertical value. So there you go, there's our maximum height, 551.56. Uh, all right, now if we want to know at what time does it reach that maximum height, that's the x value, which is time in our problem, right? Our horizontal axis represents time. So I know at 4.68, almost 4.69 seconds, 4.69 seconds after it was fired. So what happens is this guy's sitting up there on a the cliff, right? Because right here on the y axis, Here's time equals zero, right at that point. This archer fires the arrow. It reaches the maximum height 4.69 seconds after it was fired. There's our maximum height. And then it drops down. Now I want to figure out when does it reach the ground, right? Right here, when does it hit the x-axis? Again, we know something about that point. 
we know that it has a height of zero once it hits the ground. Okay, so I know the height is zero. As a matter of fact, in math, when you're dealing with polynomials, the place where the function hits, or the polynomial in this case, hits the x-axis or the horizontal axis, we call that the zero of the function. So if you go under menu, analyze graph, I want to find the zero of the function. Now again, you have to let the calculator know where to look. I go to the left of the zero, I go to the right of the zero, I tell the calculator where to look, and it says, hey, there's my zero. Now, you're wondering, well, what the heck? That I thought this is supposed to be zero, right? I thought the height is zero. This problem, or I should say this value, is written in scientific nota notation. That's 1.16, approximately, times 10 to the negative 10th. That number is so small, uh, that's really, really, really close to zero. Okay, for all purposes, if you were to round that to any anything that resembles anything in reality, that is that is really close to zero. So that is our height. So in other words, 10.56 approximately seconds after the arrow was fired, does it hit the ground? Because there's our time value. Okay, so we've got our maximum height. We've got the time it reaches its maximum height. And then we've got the time it hits the ground or reaches the ground. All right, so make sure you go back to Math Guide. Check out our literally hundreds of lessons, hundreds of interactive uh, quizzes, and, of course, we have more instructional videos. It's been a pleasure. Make sure you come back and check out more of our videos. Take care. Reminds me of the song, What Goes Up Must Come Down. What goes up must come down. Spinning wheels make the world go round. Ride a painted pole. Oh, that's too much. <laughs>